Good morning, everybody, and welcome to a very frigid day uh, in the canyons. It was 36 degrees when we got up here. It's maybe like 42 now. Um, this is going to be a very interesting car to drive with a lot of question marks. Uh, this is Mark speaking of question marks. How's it going, man? Thanks for driving this up here. I bet it took a while because it doesn't have a lot of horsepower. Yeah, it took, so, me, it took me about um, an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm giving you crap, but you've also said this yourself. So, um, what are we sitting in? This is a 1994 Toyota pickup, two-wheel drive, um, that I've lowered about four inches in the front, six, seven inches in the back. I uh, got air shocks on the back, so I do have some height adjustability, so, you know, I can use it as a truck. I can throw 500, 600 pounds in the back, air it up, and be good to go, or if I want to go to a meet and stunt and just park, air it out, and lay the axle on the frame and tuck the tire in the back, I can do that. So it's got, but it has height adjustable rear. Height adjustable the front, rear. The front is, is static, right? The front you is. can adjust it. From the factory, it's a torsion bar suspension in the front, so it is height adjustable, but, you know, you got to jack the truck up and, and mess with the torsion bars to do that, so... Yes, it so is. So if you air down the back, you have like reverse rake, you have like low rider rake. A little bit, yeah. Bats, just a little spot. bit, yeah. Um, it's a very interesting thing. You were going through this before, and, and real quick for people, Mark's not going to ride with you when, when we drive because the car would rub. Um, because <laughs> Too he's, low. he's got, because you have 245s on the front. I do. You have really 40s. wide tires, uh, so that's why it would rub. So I'll drive it solo and wait. This is a car where weight is important. You know, weight think, is very important. Um, <laughs> Passenger makes a difference. The guy who's up here who brought a Terminator wants me to drive it alone because he's taking weight out of the car, but that car won't notice if he's in the car. This car will notice. So you've done a bunch of interesting stuff. Like you've changed the door panels, you've changed the seats. These are out of a smart car. You've changed, you, you put a cup holder in. Like you've done some livable stuff. You've done some modded like performance stuff. Yeah. Uh, so what is the intention with this odd vehicle? Honestly, it's my intention has changed as I've owned it. When I first got it, like my folks got it for me when I graduated high school to get to and from work. So it was just it was just my daily driver. It's still my daily driver, but now I have another car, so I can kind of fiddle around with it. Um, so honestly, I just want you know a, a little truck with some aggressive fitment that is kind of practical, but it'll it's reliable. That's the one thing I really like about this truck. Super reliable. It's never given me an issue. I can take it anywhere. It'll be fine. So it's a little. It's it's like you ha you can have an oddball project a little bit. Yeah. and See where it goes. Yeah. Because you have exactly. you have an FR or you have a BRZ, have a BRZ right? Well, so you have a yeah. performance vehicle already, and this is something you can just kind of like. It's Whatever. cool. It's like a blank yeah. canvas, and you, there's no pressure to have your daily be you know a certain exactly. way or I don't know follow the trends of something. Like yeah. you have that car, and now you can just do what you want. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Well, I'm gonna go take it for a drive. Cool. So you can jump Enjoy. out. Enjoy. Thank you very Hopefully much. Hopefully it doesn't rub too much. <laughs> <laughs> you should be fine. I'm fine by myself, so you should be good. Whoa. Uh, um, also a Toyota product, an LFA just drove by. We'll, we'll we will cut to that shot. This is gonna be interesting. I don't know if I have enough time to put my sunglasses on before the next county. So this car has the four-speed automatic in it still. Uh, and that's why it's accelerating. Well, part of the reason it's accelerating the way it, it is. The other reason it's accelerating this way is because it has a bone stock uh, 22RE Toyota engine. It's an iron block four cylinder that they have been making since 1981. And they used in a huge variety of vehicles uh, up until I think at least 1995. And when it was in this truck, wow, this thing actually, this thing corners shockingly flat. And I'm actually going the speed limit, which is a miracle. And also feels much more, a little scarier than the Honda Civic uh, track car I drove uh, in a past episode. It was on this road um, just a week ago, or seven months ago, or eight years ago, depending on how you watch the videos. Uh, they used the 22RE in a bunch of stuff, and in this car it had 114 horsepower and 142 foot-pounds of torque. So this is like, this is the workhorse engine. This is the, the, the pack mule for Toyota, and uh, especially in this vehicle. I mean, this, this truck, this body, this is the Hilux body, 
you know so we know they put it on all different kinds of drivetrains with dip, you know differentials front and rear sr5 4x4 all that stuff uh you know the forerunner shares a platform with this truck but obviously they sh don't share much else uh, i'm gonna go left i'm gonna angle this camera a little differently now that mark's gone now that mark's gone we can be alone okay cool yeah, so this is a, the platform they shared. You know, it's the Hilux. Here, what they we called it the uh, Toyota pickup. Uh, usually, see these as utility trucks. They were, you know, pool cleaners, gardeners, um, delivery services, any kind of like light duty construction job that required uh, a good amount of room, but not necessarily needed to carry a lot of weight. You know, you're not throwing a thousand pounds of steel in the back. This isn't going to be the subject of like a truck commercial where they're dropping logs from three stories up or driving over mud. This was really a very good idea. It was kind of like before the Ford Transit Connect showed up, this was a really good option for someone who had a job that required them to move a lot of stuff around a city, you know, not in a, not in a logging road, not through a desert, around. This is weird because now we're on a much smoother road still has nice curves and the turn-in is very well the turn-in's good i won't say very good because then i run out of ways to describe cars like the lfa but the turn-in is good uh the steering feel is pretty much not there i mean the, the rack speed's okay and when I was sitting in the parking lot, uh, I don't think it has power steering or is very, very difficult. So it, I thought it was gonna have really good steering feel. It does not. I, I got nothing at the front wheels. Maybe, okay, I, I have 10% feedback from the front wheels. It's a little better than the BMW 340 that I drove on this road uh, before, but it's really, really light. Even with this, you know, canted steering wheel. Um, as far as weight, this truck weighs about 2,700 pounds. Mark put the steely wheels on it to uh, widen the stance a bit and to put the wider tire on. And those added a, a good amount of weight. You know, those are really cheap steel wheels. That's fine. Uh, he just wanted me to make a note of it. The modifications of this thing are really strange. You know, he's got air suspension or air shocks in the back. Um, he reversed the ball joints in the front to drop the front end a little bit. It's got a torsion bar or torsion leaf suspension. So it's adjustable if you put it on a rack and you know move some bolts around. It does feel really evenly balanced though. I, the front turns in, you know, sticks, brake pedal. Uh, I wish it had a little more bite up front, but this thing has drums in the rear and discs in the front. So, you know, what are we complaining about here? It's like you don't complain about the salad at McDonald's because it didn't really come with salad for a long, long time. They didn't, they didn't make that. It's an interesting vehicle. This is like a Miata pickup truck, kind of. You know, I've got, I feel like I can carry a lot of speed on the way back through these corners. I'm gonna turn around here. I'll wait till the next turn. It does feel like it would carry a lot. Look, these guys are pointing at me. Stoked on this vehicle. Or they're annoyed that I'm here, I can't tell. All right, hitting the gas. Oh, there we go. Now we're downshifting. Hitting the gas is an exercise in patience. Uh, it's, wow. That was, uh, as far as transmissions go, this is like the post office. The old post office before everything had Amazon Prime and FedEx and you <laughs> hit the gas and like, okay, it'll downshift in uh, five to seven days, sir. And if it doesn't downshift, um, come back to the store and submit the form again. Got the overdrive off. Wow, this is really weird. Like I, I'm carrying a good amount of speed and these seats, these seats are out of a smart car. Uh, he bought them from a salvage yard and replaced the bench in them. These are definitely 
the best thing about a smart car. These have pretty good bolstering, not enough lumbar for me, but I have a slight uh, curvature in my back. So the seats are keeping me in place and the tires are keeping the truck in place. And I'm basically uh, trusting the steering wheel that it knows what to do. This is a very, this is a really weird project, but I have to give Mark props because he was, he got this car as basically a kid. It was his first car. And a lot of us sell our first car, you know, to then get the next thing. Um, he was able to get another car. I think he actually got uh, hit by a car while on a motorcycle. So that enabled him to buy his BRZ. And it kind of gives him the freedom where he can do what he wants with this without much consequence, you know? Like if you have a reliable second car or a reliable daily, really, and then you've got what is really like a hunk, a relic, you know, something that a lot of people might discard as they move on to their next vehicle. But instead of doing that, you can, you can use this as an education tool in modifications, in suspension geometry, uh, fabrication, if you want to get that crazy. You know, he was talking about engine swaps before, and I think a more cynical Zach, you know, in years past might have said, why? Like, why would you go to the trouble of engine swapping this car? Well, if you already have it, and if you want to learn about, I don't know, modifying a cooling system to take a bigger engine, wiring, uh, engine bracket modifications, like what's what better way to learn that stuff than on a car you don't care about that doesn't need to be driven every day? Like that window might be getting really noisy. Um, you know, if, if I wanted to swap an LS into my car, well, I need to get a second car because I'm not going to do it right the first time or the third time and I'm going to spend a lot of time diagnosing problems that I have created. That's a, that's a terrible way to learn, you know? That's why they have internships before jobs. That's why you have school before internships. It, this is a safe space to fail. And I think that's a really cool idea. And this is like, this is pretty, this is kind of scary and silly. Like I'm, okay, a little tire squeal. And what I meant by scary is the amount of speed I'm able to carry is surprising. You know, when he pulled up in this, Okay, the road's gonna get a little louder, so I apologize. When he pulled up in this, I was like, this is an interesting project. This is an interesting idea. It's got a strange mishmash of parts, I'd, I would call it. You know, he's got these the air shocks in the back, but not the front. It doesn't have coilovers. Um, it's like a torsion beam in the front. He's got, I think, a stiffer sway bar in the back. He's got seats from a smart car. It's a Frankenstein mobile, but I think it's really easy for us to get caught up in, you know, what do I need to buy to make this car what I want? And then we turn to Amazon, we turn to forums, we turn to our, our parts supplier. And I think someone like Mark and like Corbin, if you've ever watched any of his shows, um, there's a lot to be found at a junkyard. There's a lot that can be done by taking parts from this car, that car, that fit on, a, on your own car. Especially if you have something like this where, uh, you know, there's a freedom in having a shit box to work on and experiment with. Absolutely. You can feel, I can feel what the back end's doing. Get that lean a little bit. You know, there are people that drift these. It takes a lot of modifications to do that. Uh, but Mark's planning to do an LSD at least, which would help him get out of the dirt turnouts. But it, it, I don't think I've ever driven a pickup truck in this manner. You know, I've driven a Raptor quickly on a Canyon Road before, but that's a 6,000 pound limousine with BFGs on it. But this is, this is interesting. Feels better than I expected. The balance is better than I expected. Steering feels worse than I expected, but I will definitely give Mark props for going at this project with a smile. And, uh, you know, he, he has an air about him that's like, yeah, this is weird, I know, but I'm gonna do something with it. And I think that's really cool. Uh, I wish I did that, I wanna do that in the future. Have, I think everyone, if you ever have an opportunity to work on something without having a lot of pressure about it, you'll learn a lot more. So thank you to Mark for bringing his Toyota out. Um, thank you to you guys for watching, continuing to watch the one takes. 
listening to the podcast and uh, and just everything. So thank you very much, and we will see you later.